Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to see one more interesting topic that is how to implement adio.net in ASP.NET Core 7.0 Web API. I have previously created separate videos the how to implement adio.net with .NET Core 3.0 Web 3.1 Web API, 6.0 Web API. And this is the third video on adio.net web API, which is .NET Core 7.0. If you missed that session particular, I will give the link of these two videos, which is ASP.NET Core 6.0 and .NET Core 3.1. I will give in the video description. You can check it out. Today, we are going to see how to implement adio.net in our .NET Core 7.0 Web API. Before starting the session guys, if you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell icon for future notification so that you will not miss my future videos. Let's get started. Before starting the session, let's see what is ADO.NET. ADO.NET stands for ActiveX Data Object, is a data access technology from Microsoft for .NET framework that provide communication between relational and non-relational system through a common set of component. ADO.NET stands for computer software component that program can use to access data and data service from the database. This is the simple basic the theory definition of ADO.NET. I hope you already know about this. Let's move to our Visual Studio and do some program. So I am using here Visual Studio 2022 or 2002. Let's create a new project, uh, which is I am going to create a .NET Core Web API project. It is taking much more time normally. Okay, it should not come. And click on Next. Let's see if YouTube. .NET Core 7.0. Okay. And after completing this session, I'm going to give this source code in the Google Drive and give the link in the video description so you can also check it out. Click on next. For now, I'm not keeping HTTPS. I'm keeping huge controller and keeping the upon API or swagger support. And keeping the framework version is .NET 7.0 standard term support you can see 6.0 long long term support 7.0 standard term support now click on create and we are going to need a new get package which is system.data.sql client after creating the project i'm going to add that project that new get package into my project yeah the project got created okay now I will go to tools, new get package manager and new get manage new get package for solutions. I'm going to search system.data.sql client, which one this one, select the project, click on install, accept, it will get installed. Now, this is my database. If you see my database connection, this is my server name and I have my SQL ID SA and password is SQL SQL I given. And I have a database here and I database name is U2DB, which is YouTube DB, YT DB. And I keep normally I keep this database to showcase or demo or YouTube videos. So I have a table here, TBL profile. Let's see what is there in TBL profile and how we can use this TBL profile table for our ADO.NET operation. I'm a great fan of Supernatural. In Amazon Prime series, if you ever seen this one. So this is the Supernatural profiles, Lucifer, Simon Chester, Dean Winchester, John Winchester, everything. Whatever I remember, I added into this table. And what are the city? Even also, I added some, like, right here, you can laugh on that. I, I'm going to use this table to operate 
to implement the area.net. So I have added the NuGet package. Let's close this window. Close this window also. Click on save. Now go to solution explorer. Go to app setting. Here I am going to add my connection string. Here. So for connection string. So you can see default intelligence is coming. Right. So I need the connection string. This is my local sort data machine name. This is my database name, user ID and password is SQL. Now my connection string is ready. My new get package is added. Now go to the controller section or our own controller. So for now I'm adding one controller here. Which will be API controller, MT controller, click on R. Let's say I'm giving ADO profiles controller, right? And we have column name like auto ID, full name, city is active like this. Okay, I no need of this route. And for now, I'm commenting this one. I'm going to add a model inside my application. So I right click R a folder, a models. Inside the model, I am adding one more class, which is profile model. And here I am going to keep auto ID, right? I just need this stream data of information, auto ID, full name, and city. Now go to our controller section. Oh, you can see everything is coming here, right? Guys, you want to know how I how I am getting all this intelligence? You check out my previous video. I also give the link button in the i i in the link in the i button or in the video description. This is the GitHub Copilot, guys. This one. Right. So for now, I'm going to keep my route edge. Get all profiles. I'm keeping public async tax i action results. I'm keeping same. Right. And now I'm keeping one more thing here actually. Okay, it is showing the error because we are not returning anything. Let's return something. Okay, now I need in the class level or control level. Now, if you can see, I'm adding a constructor and initializing the I configuration, right? So you can see everything is coming because of the GitHub Copilot. I it is who want to work with GitHub Copilot. So I am added some command here, which is data table DT, simple area alternate command, configuration, get default connection, which is my this one, default connection. Command I am passing, select start from TBL profile. And now it is showing profile auto ID. Okay, let's me see the spelling. Yeah, the spelling is wrong. Right? For now, make it to string. Yes. So this is my well, now it will be my HTTP get. This is GitHub Copilot, guys. Easy, just tab enter. So let's see run the application it is working or not. Guys, for now I am just showing you how to enter, how to get the record, and how to insert the record. So you can also implement your own delete and update function. For the time being, I am doing the video within 15 minutes. So that's the reason actually. So our Swagger UI got call get all profile, try it out, execute. Okay, okay. 
Yeah, I should return this one actually. I was returning a blank. Right. Now rerun the application. Okay. Now try it out. Click on execute. You can see all the records are coming. In this way, you can implement our select operation. Now implement the insert operation. So for insert operations, I need completely this. Let's copy paste and save profile. Okay. In this case, actually, I'm not keeping anything. Here, I'm keeping the profile model. Let's see. Right, and it will be a HTTP port. Now it will be same, but insert operation will be different. I'm just keeping my upon and connection dot close. And inside this, let's execute the command. So how can it insert profile values and you can see if you see the table has auto ID auto increment I just need to pass full name and city is active by default one entry date is a get date so in this case I'm writing which is name and city and this is current date so name will, will be obj dot full name obj dot city right and i'm just returning a success for now i'm keeping it in a try cache so if any error will come we can right now run the application so this is getter profile this is save profile so first now we check we have 24 row now and let okay we i miss one guy actually no i already added chocks early so let's give you the real name god and insert it one so now try it out and auto id i am giving for now zero full name giving the capital g o d and c t is the <laughs> right now try it out success now execute the query 25 record let's just see what the last record right we are inserting in this way guys i am a great fan of supernatural so don't mind on the data so in this way we can implement our radio.net in our dotnet core 7.0 web api guys i hope you like this session if you do, give me a like and share this video with your friends. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.